my fellow gnomes, another quick video today, and we're going to be making a little crawl system for our game. So let's say we've got um, some barriers like this. We can't, well, we can get through the first one because thankfully Roblox doesn't care about collisions on heads. Um, but we can jump over them, obviously, but we can't get through this smaller one. And we definitely can't get through this one. So let's make a little system to allow us to crawl. Now the first thing we want to do is we need a crawling animation. So we've got a little run animation by default, but we're going to have to make our own for crawling. So if we go to the avatar tab and go rig builder and we can add in a rig to start animating. We can go R15 or R6. I'm going to go R15, add in a block avatar like this, open up the animation editor. And then if I click, you know, I get this new blue box around it. If I click there, then I get the animation grid. I'm just going to close my output so I've got a bit more room to work with. And when we start clicking on all these objects, if you've not used the animation editor before, it allows us to position it. And when we start positioning it, we'll notice these little keyframes appear at the bottom. Now, this video isn't going to be a full tutorial of animating it. I am certainly no expert. But essentially, you just want to have him rotated down on the floor like this. We can move him down a little bit by um, grabbing the, this bottom torso part. And we can move him down further towards the floor. And you want to move his limbs in position. And then at each frame, you want something new to happen. And so then you can play a little animation but probably want to make something a little bit better than like this. <laughs> so I've actually already made one earlier. Um, but all you need to do once you finish with your animation is make sure you have looping enabled toggle that and also you want the animation priority to be set to movement. Once you've done both of those, you can go ahead and click publish to Roblox, then save it, give it a name, save it. And then once it's done, you'll get an ID. Make sure you click to copy that. And now once we've got that in the clipboard, we're going to go into starter player, starter character scripts, add ourselves a local script. And then inside of that, we're going to add an animation object. And then we're just going to paste that animation ID in here. Like so. So let's get started writing our script. So this is inside the character so that we know that the character is simply equal to the parent of this script. Now, currently it's inside starter character scripts. That's just sort of like a container folder. When the game runs, this script will actually appear inside of the character. Uh, let's just name this uh, crawl script. And then just to show you, if I now click play again, and I look inside my workspace, inside of my gnome code character, there now is a crawl script. So that's what it's going to be like when the game is running. And then we want to grab a few objects inside the character. So the first of these is the root, the humanoid root part. And we're just going to use a weight for child. We also want to grab the humanoid. And finally, the animator inside that humanoid. And now let's reference that animation that we just set up, which is inside of the script. And we're going to get the animator and load that in. So load animation and then provide script, weight for child, animation. So just that we can prove this is all working, let's just wait say task.wait three seconds, and then we'll tell the crawl animation. We can call the play method on it, and that we should hopefully see our character crawling now. So if we're playing, we can be running around, and then after a short moment, there we go. We're now stuck forever in crawling, which isn't really what we want. We want to be able to do it on a key press. So in order to access a key press, let's grab some th a new service right at the top of our script called user input service. And we're going to delete these two lines at the bottom because we're going to create our own logic. What we want to say is when there is a new input began event, so whenever the player presses a key, we want to react to that. So we connect that to a function and input began gives us two uh, parameters. The first of which is the type of input that's happened, lots of data about the input and something called processed. Now, process is basically if they click on a piece of UI, um, then we don't actually want to react to that if they're just typing in the chat. So we'll say if it is processed elsewhere in the game, then return ends. We're going to exit out of this function. And then we also want to check the state of this input event as well. So let's just make sure if the input dot user input state 
if that does not equal enum.userInputState.begin, then we don't care about it either. So then return end. But what we do care about is if they pressed our crawl key. So if the input dot key code equals, and I'm going to set this to an enum dot key code of left control. You could set this to the C key, the shift key, whatever you like, but we're going to go with the left control key. And then we want to start crawling or disable crawling depending on the state. So let's have a little variable up here called is crawling. Initially, that's going to be equal to false. And as soon as they press the left control key, we're going to set it to ever the opposite of what its current value is. So it starts off at false, they press it, is crawling is now going to be equal to true. So if they are crawling, then we want to play that animation. So crawl animation, play. And if they're not, then we want to stop the animation. So let's hit play. We'll test that again. We can be moving around. We hit left control. We're now in our crawling. We can move around. And as soon as you press control again, we're now moving as before. Now, this is pretty rubbish for a few reasons. Uh, one, we're stuck looping doing the animation while uh, we're not moving, which is a bit weird. And also, we go super fast along the floor, which is not really what we want either. So let's fix up that. Let's create some default values for ourselves. So we're going to say speed default equals to whatever the current speed of the humanoid is. So humanoid dot walk speed. And then we'll say speed crawling. And I'm going to set this to, I think, five. The default is 16. Um, so five will be considerably slower. So then I can set the humanoid dot walk speed. If we're crawling, then it's going to be set to the speed crawling. And else, it's going to be set to the speed default. Now, in order to stop that, um, the animation was always looping, right? We want to be able to control the speed. We need to check if the player is running or not. And to do this, we can use the humanoid.running event. And that connects into a function, just like input began. And this one tells us the speed that they're moving at. So let's create, just like we got an is crawling, let's create a is running. Initially, that will be equal to false. And let's just say that is running is going to be equal to whether the speed is greater than 0 0.5. So if they're moving more than 0 0.5 studs every time this is called, then we know they're moving, okay? And if they are running, then we can use that to control the speed of our animation. So crawl animation, adjust speed, and we'll set that to one, full speed. But else, well, we actually want to stop that animation from moving entirely. We don't want to stop the animation. We just want to freeze it in place. And then when we start our animation playing down here, let's just check. We'll say if we're not running, then we also want to set the initial speed to zero when we start playing it. Let's test that out for ourselves. We're running around, and if we hit crawl while well, still, there we go. So there's no looping happening now, and we're much slower. Oh, that is painful slow speed. And then if we stop crawling, we can run around again. And we can start to get through some of these little gaps now. We can get through the first one. And if we try and get through the second, we're actually going to get stuck here. So the reason for this is if we look at our character. And you'll notice there's this white box here. That's our humanoid root part. If we transparency is one by default, but if we turn it off, we can see this is our root part and it always stays right here. It doesn't move unlike our animated self, but it has got collisions on it, which means that even though it looks like we're on the floor, we're actually getting stuck on all these objects. So all we need to do is in of our crawl script, if we are crawling, then we'll set the root dot can collide equal to false. Otherwise, if we're not crawling, then we'll re-enable the collisions. And if we're going through here, we can see now we can be in our crawling and we can get through this one and we can even get through this tiny little one. Now the collisions is disabled. 
Now, one little extra thing I would like to tweak is our camera because our camera hasn't moved. And even though our character's down the floor, our camera's now quite high up, which means we tend to sort of clip through all of these crawl spaces, which is a little bit annoying. So if we go into the workspace and look at gnome code again, we can see the humanoid has this property called camera offset. At the moment it's set to zero, but we can actually lower this down. So we could set it to minus two on the Y axis and that will lower it a bit. And we could make it go forwards a little bit, another minus two. And that's more where I'd like my camera to be when I'm crawling, because it means that I'm going to go through all of these crawl spaces much easier. My camera is not going to clip in that same awkward way as it was when it was that a little bit higher. It's very difficult to actually get my camera positioned correctly. I can just about do it, but I need to have the, the camera pointed all the way down like this. So let's set that up in our script. Just like we had the speed values, we'll set the cam default, and that will be equal to humanoid.camera offset, whatever it is at the start of the game. And then we'll have cam crawling, and that's going to be equal to a vector 3.new. I like it at minus two on the Y and minus two on the Z. Now we could just set these properties directly like we've done um, with all of these, but I find that can be a little bit jittery for the camera. So instead we're gonna utilize tween service here and that will just allow us to do it a little bit more smoothly. And now we can create a smooth tween transition. So we're gonna create a new tween that will be equal to tween service we provide the humanoid uh, tween info dot new we could add all kinds of properties oh little typo but I'm just going to make it last 0 0.1 seconds long zoom out a bit and then finally we have the property table so use these little curly brackets and inside of that I'm just going to say camera offset which is the name of the property I'm going to set that equal to if we're crawling, then it's the cam crawling value. There we go. And then right below it, we can tell that tween to play. And I'm going to copy this, paste it down below, but else if they're not crawling. And this time I want the cam offset to be the cam default. And now when I tap that control key, you can see there's just that little gentle smooth transition down rather than it snapping, which makes it feel a little bit nicer. Uh, one final thing we should probably change is disable jumping because that does not look right at all. So let's go back into our script and add two more values. Local jump default humanoid.jump height. We could create a jump crawling, but I'm not really going to bother since it's just zero. So if they are crawling, then humanoid.jump height equals zero. And else, if they're not crawling, it's equal to the jump default value. And now we can see we cannot jump no matter how many times we smash that space bar. And we can get through this crawl space. We can get through this one and we can even get through this tiny one at the end. There we go. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this helps you with whatever crawling mechanics you want to add to your game. If you found this helpful, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing. But until next time, goodbye!